Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak were both grilled by Sky's Beth Rigby yesterday and both emerged pretty bruised. Consensus suggests Starmer's performance went down better with viewers, but one moment clearly left him struggling. It came when Beth Rigby quizzed Starmer about his move from backing Jeremy Corbyn to invoking him as a boogeyman at every possible opportunity. In the last two general elections, you asked people to elect Jeremy Corbyn as their prime minister. You said, I do think Jeremy Corbyn would make a great prime minister, Jeremy Corbyn. Did you mean that? I was certain that we would lose the 2019 election. That was we were not my ready. question. I was certain that we would, I was certain that we would lose it. Um, I did campaign for Labour. Of course so I did. You, you, I will openly say I campaigned for Labour. I wanted good colleagues to be returned into the Labour then, Party. When you said it. Uh, and I wanted a party that was capable of being changed so we could so face the future you, again. Did you not mean it when you said it? I was certain that we would lose. And That's I think many other people question. were certain that we would lose. So you didn't mean it? I was certain that we would lose. So you said it because you didn't think he would be Prime Minister well, anyway? Of course I campaigned for the Labour Party at the last election and the election before that and the one before that. I've always campaigned for the Labour Party and I'm glad I did because I wanted good colleagues to be returned to have their seats so that we could the, um, fight for the future of the Labour Party. I, I will... He's so evasively disrespectful, isn't he? Passive-aggressive, good colleagues, and we all know who's not included in the good colleagues. Just tell the truth. Tell the truth. You were <laughs> you were part of the Labour right now and you were approached by someone who said you were never going to win with Jeremy Corbyn, so you changed tack because you... Even, you, even look, I don't agree with Kiss Tama on 90% of things. And the way I would spin this would be, we wanted to get Labour elected and we didn't think Labour would get elected under Jeremy Corbyn and I wanted to be part of a winning Labour party. That's all you have to say, really. Um, but he won't say that. This is what Navarra's Aaron Bastani made of Starmer's deflections, though. The implications of this are even bigger than you think. Starmer says he knew for certain Labour would lose in 2019. So why, when Labour led in the polls, did he help engineer a position of the people's vote if he knew they'd lose anyway? Aaron continues, this matters. Why? Because all or nothing strategy of people like Starmer meant a soft Brexit was impossible. He raised stakes to all of nothing, knowing he'd get nothing? The truth. He played games on Brexit, massively contrary to public good because it benefited him. A hard Brexit didn't matter. What did was that Starmer created a situation with Labour where heads he benefited and tails he benefited. It's an indictment of our media class that this has been barely examined. Helena, do you agree with Aaron? I don't know if Keir Starmer is that savvy as an operator, but maybe Morgan McSweeney had already got his hands on him by then. He absolutely had. This is a really, really telling moment for Keir Starmer. I think it's the first time I've seen him publicly admit what happened in 2017 within the halls of Labour together, tacitly, I guess, rather than explicitly, but tacitly nonetheless. This idea that he campaigned because he wanted to be able to stop the Conservatives, even if he didn't believe in Jeremy Corbyn's particular leadership style, that's been consigned to the scrap heap. Now he has essentially publicly admitted the only reason people like him stuck around and campaigned for Labour is because they wanted to still be in the club so that they could then essentially hoodwink the membership later to be able to change it into a right-wing party later on. It's obviously worth talking about Labour together a lot as a, as a political grouping within the Labour Party. And we talk about the kind of vested interests who funded it, for example, the role it plays in the current Labour Party. It's really important to understand as well the role that it played specifically between 2017 and 2019. Of course, we saw at this point, we saw loads of Labour like PLP members leave the party. We saw the formation of things like Change UK. We saw this kind of centrist split of people, like there's this guy from the Tony Blair Institute who tried to set up a, a parallel political party that ultimately failed. He then tried standing as a Labour MP in this last round of selections and also failed. And what Labour together as a group was, very specifically, was to try and ensure people didn't leave. So that they had a kind of cadre of MPs within the PLP who were still around, who they could be able to use to reshape the Labour Party once the Jeremy Corbyn plan hadn't worked come the 2019 election. That, as we have seen, they tried to ensure it didn't work in its work in its proper way. And what they did was is they had this Labour Together grouping. We've all seen them, people like Shibana Mahmood, Rachel Reeves, Wes Streeting, Bridget Phillips, and all members of Labour Together who were convinced by people like McSweeney not to leave the party and to stay quiet, stay in the background, while they were doing the hard work to, again, as we've all heard now, to poll the Labour membership, 
find out what they could tell the party and the leadership election to be able to win, to then turn tail and then boot people out once they had their control over the Labour Party machinery in the background. And again, this is the first time that he's basically openly admitted the only reason these people stuck around is because they wanted to be able to take control of the party later. Very, very telling.